Hey everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with us today on Comics from the Future. Happy Friday the 13th. We hope your day is going extra spooky, but not unlucky at all. <laughs> um, in case you don't know, my name's Megan. I'm Andy. And I'm Jason. We're with Infinity Flux Comics out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. And this show is all about previewing with you some cool new comics, new series, and some stuff that might go under the radar. But you are going to be in the know because this is the comic show for smart people. And you can let your store know by the end of this weekend what you want to put on your pull list. Uh, before we begin today's show, please take a second to subscribe to our channel. But we also want to announce that we will not be filming any videos next week unless... Andy, you give him a bunch of love and attention in the comments <laughs> for some Andy-only shows next week. Jason and I are taking a small break, but Andy may come through in the clutch and do some videos on his own, so mm -hmm. give him some shout-outs in there. But anyway, things may be a little different, but just for one week, and then we'll be back to normal the next. Okay, so uh, pretty solid <clears throat> week this Bigger week. Bigger than the last yes. two or three, for sure. Yeah, definitely. I'm excited because, yeah, we've had a few... Uh, Easy on the wallet, but, you know, that's not what we're doing with comics. We want the more the merrier. Yes. So let's get to our featured comics this week, beginning with a big one. This is DC's big event for the summer, Dark Crisis. So you may have read the lead-up to it with the free comic book day, Dark Crisis, number zero. Um, we talked about last time, The Road to Dark Crisis, but this is the actual official number one. Um, I actually did get a chance. I didn't get to read it. I did kind of flip through it just to see the high the high points and um, notable things. But I will not reveal any secrets here, but it does look very good. Uh, Daniel uh, Simpre, I'm, I'm not sure how you say his name, the artist, awesome job on this. Joshua Williamson is writing it. So it's a funny um, setup for a story because the setup was back in Justice League 75 with the death of the Justice League or the supposed death of the Justice League. You have to read the series to find out what happened to them. But this is the uh, other heroes, especially the younger kind of protégés and family members and everything of the Justice League, stepping up and uh, forming a new Justice League team when the, the main ones are gone. Uh, but that also means that the villains know that the Justice League are gone and they are also going to make a big play for power uh, in this. Some cool things you'll see in this is Jonathan Kent will put together a new Justice League team and it may not be uh, exactly who you think is going to be on the team. It may not even be all heroes. He may have found some uh, more dubious people who want to work with the Justice League. So really cool, great art. Um, it do isn't just Justice League. There's some Teen Titans stuff in there. It's a pretty uh, significant Teen Titans stuff. You get kind of a picture of the whole DC universe in this one shot. Or not a one shot. This <laughs> first issue of this series um, that will be a mini series. So really cool. Very excited for this event. Looks like it's going to be a very unique event. Um, not just Justly like going against a giant cosmic entity, but something else going on as well. So this is our A cover for that. It is a wraparound, so this is the back side of that. Very cool. Love these covers. Then we have the Capullo cover. We have the uh, Jamal Campbell cover. We have the Inyuk Lee cover. So, you know, uh, when Andy was reading it, I was like, or when you were skimming through it, I'm like, who's in the Justice League? Who's yeah. in the Justice League? Um, this is not a spoiler cover, really. No. Yeah, you, you might be surprised. We have the Bruno Redondo cover, which I think is interesting because it's like, mm -hmm. hey, people like Nightwing. Let's just yeah. do a what could essentially be a Nightwing cover. Let's call Redondo. Hey, you have any uh, <laughs> covers you wanted to do for Nightwing that might fit this? And this is a very interesting one. Um, this one you may not see a lot of places. It was kind of buried in uh, our order form for it or whatever. Uh, this is a Jim Lee homage cover <clears throat> so i believe the art is by jim lee and from what it sounded like there's going to be one of these covers for each of the issues i'm not 100 percent sure but you can see it's got that kind of classic infinite crisis font on there and if you look at each of these little squares at least on this one they represent different live action 
<laughs> versions of DC characters. So the bottom right uh, corner, you have uh, Robert Pattinson's Batman. Uh, to the left of that, you've got Aquaman with Jason Momoa. Uh, upper, I believe, upper right, you have... Um, I'm not sure which one that was, but I know there's also a Flash. There's a bat, another Batman on here. So this is the front side. You've got Black Adam. And then the back side, yeah, you've got up in the top left corner is Suicide Squad. Um, just a whole bunch of stuff. You'll have to take a close look to try to figure out what all the things are. But I believe Michael Keaton Batman is on the Flash one, which mm -hmm. is super cool. So, yeah, uh, check with your store about availability for this one because it was so weird, but I want to make sure it, we have it on here, that if it is just open availability, which I believe it is, that you will order it, because it's super cool. Okay, so from Marvel, so Sam Wilson already had his number one. Mm -hmm. Now Steve Rogers gets his number one of his ongoing series, Captain America, Sentinel of Liberty. So in this, it says, you know, Captain has always been represented by his shield. His shield is a very big deal. It's an icon, not just for himself, but for the whole country, really for the whole world. Everyone knows what it means. Well, in this, Captain America discovers his shield has, like, a secret history of some sort. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to expect with that, but it's supposed to change how he feels about the 20th century and how he wants to continue battling and, and treating things in the 21st century so obviously this is going to date ba date back to like world war ii yeah and such so that's all i could find out about it um there's no spoilers on what this secret could be but yeah he finds out the shield there's something going on with it so that is what's going on in captain america sentinel of liberty number one the new ongoing series for steve rogers so we got a few variants here is the Mavroduce variant. Not an artist name I recognize, so That's I may be really saying cool. that wrong, but yeah. Looks like it would be on the back of a leather jacket. Mm -hmm. That really stands out, that's for sure. Here is the Stormbreakers variant. Then we have the Vecchio Pride variant. And lastly, we have the Scotty Young variant. <laughs> I love how much the Scotty Young one looks like the A cover, but just yeah. cuter. What, what do you think? Is the shield going out or is it coming back? Hard, hard to tell. Oh, yeah. He, did, he didn't do any action lines to, <laughs> to tell you. Okay, next up is Clementine Graphic Novel. This is going to be $14.99, and this is actually a trilogy of graphic novels that's going to be releasing from Skybound. So some of you may have seen, uh, if you went to Free Comic Book Day, that they had the little preview for Clementine available. But yes, this is finally coming out. Um, this is going to be about the 17-year-old Clementine learning, like a lot of the characters in Walking Dead, trying to, the difference between surviving and actually living your life. They deal with that theme a lot in The Walking Dead, so it's going to be the same here, but for a group of teens. Essentially, we're going to be in a village of teenagers uh, in the harsh winter trying to survive. So that's our setting here. And once again, three trilogy of graphic novels. You don't see that very often. It's going to be written and illustrated by Tilly Walden. If you don't know anything about Clementine, she was, of course, introduced in The Walking Dead video game, and then she had her first comic appearance in Skybound X number one. So... They're definitely using this character a lot more, so this could be an interesting thing to jump in on if you like the Walking Dead universe at all. She is going to be a big part of it, so coming out soon, just the one cover for the graphic novel. I like the idea. It's like now that Walking Dead is kind of winding down, the comic's done, and the show's winding down, what should we do with the property? I know, the young adult Make market. <laughs> that's, that's where to go next. Yeah, and if you read the uh, one shot, it may be young adult, but they still have to kill zombies. Yeah. This is not, you know, they're not avoiding zombies. She's 17, you know, that's, yeah. that's a little older. Okay, next up is a DC Pride Tim Drake special. This is for Pride Month. And I didn't know going into this, but this is uh, five ninety nine, and it collects stories from Batman Urban Legends 4 through 6 and 10, where, of course, Tim Drake uh, comes to the realization of his identity is bisexual, and... But this also has new content that says it's going to set the stage for Tim Drake in 2022 and further kind of where he's going to be and what his path is going to be, which I think is interesting because he hasn't really been in the main 
Batman books or family for a while. So this is uh, just a one shot, but there are two covers for this. We have the A cover and the Travis Moore variant. Okay, also sort of coinciding with Pride Month, they are releasing this Hulkling and Wiccan number one. This is a one shot though. In fact, I had to kind of do a little research on this. This was originally um, released digitally mm -hmm. a while back and now they've decided to go ahead and release it in the more important, better print form, <laughs> or at least what I prefer. <laughs> and uh, so what's interesting is this is a double-sized one-shot for $5.99, and in it, Agatha Harkness actually targets um, Hulkling and Wiccan's sort of epic romance, and uh, for her own mysterious purposes, she, she starts meddling. So we haven't seen a lot of Agatha, but she's mm -hmm. starting to pop up in things yeah. because we know uh, she's going to be getting her own show yep. at Disney+. Plus. So I think a lot of people, that's what this show is about. I think a lot of people are like, what is this? Is this ongoing? Is it not? Where did it come from? So I did all that research for you. <laughs> that's what it's about. So make sure if you wanted to ask your store, because a lot of these one shots are not going to be ordered too much over what people ask for. Yeah. So, And we have the, the Checchio variant for this as well. And yeah, there's Agatha there in the background. Looks very different than her uh, MCU version. Yeah, I have a feeling they'll yeah. mold this comic one into yeah, the other eventually. All right, next up is the Skybound Presents After School. So, this is a new horror anthology. It's just going to be four parts. Unfortunately, I'm already excited about this premise, but it's just going to be a four-issue miniseries. I bet you they'll do more with it. So, it basically is going to take familiar cautionary tales and turn them on their head. Like an after school special, but the horror version of it. So it sounds really cool. Each issue is going to be standalone and feature a new creative team. Um, our first one here is about, I don't know what the cautionary tale is, but it's a girl who just can't seem to do anything right and she gets a dog. Hopefully help her with her confidence. And I'm sure something terrible is going to happen to that dog. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this sounds like a really cool premise, and the horror anthology genre is doing really well in comics right now, so check that out if you like stuff like Ice Cream Man and, and that sort of thing. So I'm looking at the dog, and is there like a little bit of blood splatter on it? Looks like it, and yeah. that makes sense uh, for the premise. That's terrible. That dog is so adorable. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next up is another new mini series from DC. This is Multiversity Teen Justice number one. It's going to be a six-part mini-series following the uh, kind of the Teen Titans from Earth-11. So that is where the new Speedster is from that we've seen pop up in a bunch of different things. Um, this is Earth-11, and they first appeared back in 2020 and then in the DC Pride special from this year. But uh, sounds really cool. It's kind of the gender-flipped version where... There is a male version of Raven. There's a, a Supergirl, but it's kind of like if Jonathan Kent was a Supergirl, a female Robin. All sounds really cool. And they are going to be taking on um, the Church of Blood, a classic uh, Teen Titans um, evil group. Uh, but this time it's led by Sister Blood instead of Brother Blood. And they'll also be going up against Hive. And just sounds like a lot of classic Teen Titans ideas and stories. Uh, reimagined for this new team as well as you know they're teenage characters so they run into the usual teenage problems of finding themselves and growing up and figuring out their place so sounds really cool um, and like I said it's a six-part mini series this is our a cover for it then we have the Hans cover with Robin we have the burn pride month variant and then a blank cover. All right, so I'm excited about this one. Um, Marvel is bringing back the new Fantastic Four. That's right, the team from 1990. You got Gray Hulk. He's actually Joe Fixit Hulk. Mm -hmm. Spider-Man, Wolverine, and Dan Ketch Ghost Rider in a new five-part miniseries. So, unfortunately, this is not set now. They'd have a lot of explaining to do yeah. as to how these characters <laughs> would be together and in these forms. This is set just slightly after 
we last saw them after they had formed their team way back in Fantastic Four 347, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so anyway, what had happened back then is the Fantastic Four had gotten uh, taken over, I think, by the Skrulls, and one pretended she was Sue Storm and was like, boo-hoo, my team's all gone. Uh, will you four come together? But really it was to try to like get them to do her bidding. Still created one of the most awesome alternative Fantastic Fours ever. I mean, yeah. this is just a team. I don't know why they just don't do an ongoing book about this. Anyhow, this is going to be a five-issue miniseries written by Peter David. And we've got some really cool covers here. This is the Adams variant. This is the Andrews variant. I love that one because it almost looks like it's holographic. It's got kind of waves of color over it. We've got the Ron Lim variant. We've got the Sliny variant. Yep, Fortnite. I was going to say, what is going on? Okay, that, <laughs> yeah, that, that's a Fortnite That variant. answers my questions. And uh, then we have the Zolo variant. Uh, in addition, they're also, this doesn't say it in the trade dress, but this is Marvel Tales' new Fantastic Four. This is also available for order. This is a different book. This is going to reprint Fantastic Four 347 through 349, the ones I just was talking about where the team got pulled together. So if you want to get a, if you want to get those reprinted with a nice new cover, here is a way to do that. And, um, that was written by Walt Simonson. Mm -hmm. He was the guy who, who came up with this great idea with art by Art Adams. All right, next up from Behemoth Comics is The Illusion Witch, and this is about a world-famous uh, female illusionist, and unfortunately she is traumatized by the loss of her father and her son. So this was actually a Kickstarted comic, I think, at least a while ago. Obviously this version's not. It's officially published. Uh, but it's about fantasy, love, and family. She is transported to another realm where she has to battle real demons and uh, mental ones as well. So looks like a little heartwarming fantasy story. Uh, Going to be six issues, once again, from Behemoth. And we have a few covers. This is cover A. These are all by the same artist, Eriko. This is our cover B. And this is cover C. Very Zatanna vibes. Mm-hmm. Okay, next up is another new miniseries. DC is just, this month, doing a ton. <clears throat> this is Poison Ivy, number one of six. And this is going to be by G. Willow Wilson and Marcio Takara. And really interesting, because this kind of picks up on the Poison Ivy storyline post-Batman and Fear State and all that, where Poison Ivy has a new body uh, after she was kind of split into, like, Queen Ivy and all of that. Um... And it talks about, you know, she's been a hero, she's been a villain, she's been a monster, uh, she's been an activist. But uh, this time, she is going to try and help the world by destroying humanity, which is a very Poison Ivy thing. You know, she looks at all the plant life and says, oh, the real problem here is humanity. So this is going to be her trying to do that, um, but maybe learning all along the way that maybe that's not the best thing she could be doing. Um... Sounds really cool. There's not a whole lot of information on this first issue. I even looked up the second issue, and it kind of sounds like a little bit of a cross-country type story where she stops at a, a convenience store and meets some people there that maybe turn her mind away from uh, destroying humanity. But we'll have to see. All sounds really cool. So, yeah, this is uh, only six issues, and this is our A cover. We have our Warren Lau variant. And our Chris Anka Pride Month variant. Yeah, I don't think Poison Ivy, she hasn't had too many mini-series in the past. No, she had that one by that Clay Mann did the art for a little while ago. But she's such a compelling character. I'm, it's shocking she doesn't have more. Hmm. All right, so another DC mini-series, <laughs> Nubia, Queen of the Amazons, is beginning. This is going to be a four-issue mini-series. So, of course, Nubia had her coronation special. That, that released not long ago. It was just a one-shot. And now that she is the queen of the Amazons, she is going to leave Themyscira for the first time ever. And that is because not all the Amazons she's queen of live there. There are now three tribes. There's the Escasita and the Bana Migdal. And she's going to go and visit their lands. But as she does this, 
a villain from her past seems to be shadowing her every move and is poised to strike, um, apparently for some reason waiting for her to have become queen, or maybe it'll hurt people the most to, to, to get at her. So that is what is going on in Nubia, Queen of the Amazons, four-issue miniseries. And we have this Jay Lee variant. And the... Wada Pride Month variant. And now we're going to do other number ones. A lot of, a lot yep. of featured books <laughs> this week. So, but here are some other number ones. Starting off with this one shot from Milestone. It's called Milestones in History. So, just as many Marvel and DC and all sorts of characters and heroes that we know are built up of past legends and important inspirational people, so were a lot of Milestones most famous are all of Milestones in the Dakota universe as characters. So uh, this is going to talk about and do little stories on many black and African figures throughout every single era from literature to aviation, music, dance, military conquest, and more. So you can just get more of the background of where some of the inspirations for some of these characters came from. Sounds like a really cool idea. It also says at the end it will point toward the future of the Milestone universe and what's going to go on with that. So. Pretty neat. Just a one shot once again. We have cover A from Criss Cross and cover B from Doug Braithwaite. Okay, next up we have another um, of these Artist Elite books. We talked about one last time. Before we talked about Artist Elite Primer Red. This is Artist Elite Primer Blue. Um, this is a bunch of artists and creators creating their own characters and this is just like the other one, a primer issue that is going to have a lot of the behind the scenes on the creation and a little bit more about the characters that you're going to be seeing coming up in their own books. So uh, in this one we have artists like Ali Garza doing a character or a book called Sandwiches, which <laughs> sounds great. Uh, Chad Harden, who you may know from uh, working a lot with Jimmy Palmiotti and Amanda Connor and stuff on Harley Quinn, is doing Death Watch. We have Dexter Soy doing Red Ronin, we have um, Freddie Williams doing Belong, Jordan Gunderson doing Apothesis, and Tyler Kirkham doing one called Final Boss. So it sounds really cool. They're all very, um, strike me as very like 90s era looking, which I really love the look of that. So just the one cover, if you want to get primed for these new characters, this is what you'll want to read. Okay, so another Marvel book for Pride Month is Marvel Voices Pride. Um, like the past ones, this is an anthology celebrating LGBTQI plus characters and creators. Um, however, I have, I've done a little extra research on this one. This is going to have a first appearance that I think a lot of people might care about. There is going to be the first appearance of a new trans mutant named Escapade. So this is not a cover. This is some interior art that, that I have uh, come across. There, there's been some articles on this. And I find that, that the uh, Marvel Voices stuff, they, they sell pretty well here, but if there's a first appearance, they always sell out. And this yeah. time they're actually telling us in advance. So we want you to know. So Escapade has some pretty interesting powers. What she can do is she can switch um, locations with any other person within, I think she has to be within seven feet, but she can also switch attributes with them. Huh. Um, yeah, this is a quote from the creator. She can switch possessions, skills, superhuman powers, and even situations. So really interesting, you know, I, I can't wait to see what writers do with a power like that. Anytime you have hiccups, you're like, ba-ba, now you have my hiccups. Yeah, and, and <laughs> right. Useful. <laughs> Very useful. So that that's the new character, and she's also going to have a tech-savvy best friend named uh, Morgan Red, who will also be premiering in this. And it's already been uh, tweeted by the creator that these characters will be back in the fall in New Mutants. So it's not oh, okay. just a first for this. They're going to be in New Mutants. And so here's a design for Escapade as well. Cool. And so here are the rest of the covers I was going to show, though. So here is the Bartel variant. I think some people are going to want this one, too. Yeah. Here is the Koipel variant. And then we have the Reader <coughs> variant. A lot of good variants yeah. for, this, for this batch. 
I feel like I got all the books this week that only have one cover. It just has one <laughs> cover for Ward Number One. This is a four-part mini series from Dark Horse, written by Kevin Scott, who is a writer on Star Wars: High Republic. And this is a medical drama about a secret supernatural hospital, uh, brimming with fairies and trolls and all sorts of interesting creatures. So that was the the main bit of this. So it sounds pretty cool. Um, kind of reminds me of that E.T.E.R. book that came out recently, yeah. but this time it's Supernatural Creatures. So yeah, just the one cover, four-part series. And you may have seen this before in, you know, maybe some dollar boxes <laughs> at different comic book stores, but this is Cyberforce number one. They are celebrating the 30th anniversary of Cyberforce since it came out uh, right at the launch of Image. So Image is celebrating theirs, and so is Cyberforce, um, of course, by... Uh, Mark Silvestri, some very uh, cool characters that had long careers and continue to pop up and stuff here and there. But this is a, they call it a deluxe commemorative edition. I'm not sure what's deluxe about it. They don't say. Um, I'm guessing it may have kind of a letter from Silvestri or um, just some back matter stuff about the history of Cyberforce. But uh, if you like that original series and you want to uh, celebrate it, or if you've never read it and you want to get a new, really nice copy of Cyberforce, this will be a great one for that. This is the A cover, and this is interesting. So this is the uh, Petrates uh, cover with Velocity, but the variants for this are $10 as opposed mm -hmm. to either $3.99 or $4.99 wow. for the other ones. So uh, yeah, definitely talk to your store. Let them know if you want these other ones because they probably won't be ordering as many uh, of those. Uh, yeah, so this is that cover, and then we also have the Brett Booth cover, which will also be $10. That's interesting. I've never done interesting that Interesting model. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why, but we'll guess we'll see when they come in. Yeah, I'm glad we do this show because I don't want a bunch of customers coming in <laughs> with sticker shock like, oh, I wanted the variants, and then, oh, they're double the price. Yeah. It's like, well, we, we, we got that info out we there. We warned you. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so this is Where Starships Go to Die. This is a new um, book from Aftershock. And uh, so the premise is interesting. This is going to be sci-fi horror. So there's a place on the planet called Point Nemo. And this is the furthest oceanic point from any landmass. So you're as far from land as you can be. And in this is where Earth has been dumping its spaceships. It's so that they could rest at the bottom of the ocean and not really harm anybody and just stay away from everything. Well, there's a team up of this African uh, astronaut and this Indian sort of shipping magnet who decide, hey, let's go out there and let's salvage hmm. some of this cool old spaceships that are down there. Well, once they get down there, they discover something horrific. I'm betting it's alien in nature. <laughs> I'd be pretty disappointed if it wasn't. Yeah. So that is the premise to where starships go to die. Very difficult to do it. A quick elevator pitch on that one. Yeah. But, I mean, good sci-fi, that's just how it is. It's very so. interesting, too, because that is almost the exact same plot as that new Aquaman Andromeda book, because it takes place in Point Nemo as well. Oh, really? And something's going on down there at the bottom. And there's some horror at the bottom. Maybe the stuff. two books are going to cross I'm, over. Oh, man. That would be... What a surprise. Okay, so now we're going to get to cool covers and other comics. This is going to be issue number twos and threes of comics you've perhaps already started reading and want to be reminded to sign up for, and a bunch of variants that we think are noteworthy this week. Starting with Flashpoint Beyond number two, as Thomas Wayne continues to investigate the mystery of the Clockwork Killer. This is cover A and cover B from, ooh, Zermanico. Yeah, that's the uh, the interior artist. Cool. I've never known how to say that. <laughs> Starts with an X. Okay, yeah. this is a really cool cover. This is Moon Knight Black, White, and Blood number two. This is the Ryan Stegman cover. In this, you've got um, three stories, one by Benjamin Percy uh, that has a, a team up between Moon Knight and Doctor Strange, one from David uh, Pepros. Uh, that deals with all of Moon Knight's personalities having to kind of team up. And then a story by Patrick Zercher that kind of goes back to Mark Spector's mercenary days. So, um, 
the number one did really well here. People are just clamoring for more Moon Knight. And this one looks awesome. I love Ryan Stegman's art. So this is our A cover. And then we have our Dustin Weaver variant. That's a strong cover, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so also from Marvel, it is this is the main cover to Spider-Man 2099 Exodus number 2. So in this one, we're going to get a new 2099 character. Everybody was hoping they'd be in the first yeah. one. They were not. I reviewed it. I told everyone early, <laughs> sorry, they're not in it. But this one has the first appearance of Loki 2099. Which I'm really interested in on the one hand, but on the other hand, that idea is kind of silly when you think of Loki as like an immortal being. Yeah. And he's like, oh, it's 2099. Better put on a, a, a bandolier and <laughs> some extra pouches. Yeah, or... put a robot arm on. Yeah, regardless, I, I'm hooked. I want to see what Loki 2099 is. He is supposed to be the last survivor of Ragnarok. Like, Ragnarok has already happened. He's the only one that survived it. So I think it will have changed him quite a bit. So this is the regular cover. Here is the Lashley variant with that awesome bordering. I, I think it mm -hmm. looks really good in that yeah. color, yeah. too. And here is the Ron Lim connecting variant. All right, then we have Grim number two from Boom Studios. I actually just finished reading Grim number one. Uh, it was really good. One of our best sellers of the week for sure. It is about like a community almost of Grim Reapers. It's about the afterlife. It is about our main character who uh, seems to be trapped between worlds. I won't reveal too much, but it's about Grim Reapers and it's pretty good. So uh, number two is coming out. If you got a chance to grab number one, definitely like it and sign up for number two. We got cover A here. We have our Cover B from Frizen. This is a foil version. Oh, I'm sorry, this is a cover A, but the foil version. Then we have cover C from. This does not look like Frizen. Yeah. I almost never see her draw male characters A, so that's kind of surprising, but yeah, yeah this is a Frizen cover C. Uh, and then we have the FOC reveal variant. So a few different covers for you to choose from. If you missed out on number one, there will surely be a second printing of this. And also is Twig number two, which I just got done reading too. Uh, yeah, we, we're surrounded by comics constantly. so Because bo both of those were ones I read. Yeah. So. All comics are within reach at any time here. Um, so Twig number two, uh, the death of a path sayer sends Twig and Splat on a journey to a mysterious lab. Um, if you missed out on this first one, you really missed out on something great because... This is such a creative universe from Scotty Young. I love, you know, when you just slap faces on random objects and you make them all goofy. I love it. And, you know, there's a mountain that has a, a big face on it. And there's, like, little treasure chests that have faces on them and stuff. It's a very fun, whimsical world, but not without danger, which I think is the great, uh, you know, middle ground of it's cute, but watch out because there's some scary cute stuff, too. Um yeah, so this is our main cover for that. I mean, look right there. Already got a pretty scary looking guy looming over Twig. We have a Peach Momoko variant, also super cool with this eyeball. And one to make note that there is going to be a Scotty Young variant, but that was not available. I dug everywhere looking for it, but he must be too busy writing the book <laughs> to uh, get that turned in. So, But that means you probably want to order the Scotty Young one because yep. that will be the hard one to get. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, the week Twig came out, I read it, but really, um, I thought it was more, I knew you would like even more, yeah. as much as I liked it, it's so your style of thing, but it just happened to be that week, tons of <laughs> yeah. comics that you were already reading came out, so I had, to, I had to read the new one, which I was really glad to do. Yeah, and then you were like, hey, this is really good, this yeah. is like the best book of the week. Yeah. All right, so this is the Yoon variant to Vampirella Strikes number two. I think that they're doing a little bit of uh, Macbeth here. Yeah. yeah. And then here is the Caldwell variant for Vampirella Strikes number two. They've been getting some really good cover art on these yeah. dynamite books lately. My, my note on this is it's all about the covers. <laughs> yeah. It's all about the covers. All right, probably the same can be said for this series. This is Belit and Valeria number two. Number one just dropped this week, so here are a couple covers. This is the Andolfo cover A. 
pretty cool. And then here is cover D, the Bushimi homage cover. You know which, what, that's an homage to? I do not. I believe that is X-Men when Dark Phoenix is... Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. The or uh, the Return of Dark Phoenix mm -hmm. or the Return of Phoenix, yeah. Yep. Okay, another book that very popular this week, super cool. Um, I'm very excited for the future of this. This is Frank Frazetta's Death Dealer number two. The solicitation doesn't say a whole lot about um, what's going to be in issue number two. Uh, just kind of more of, you know, Frazetta characters that he would draw are now kind of coming to life in these issues. But I'm actually friends with the one of the editors on here, and I was talking to him about how cool this is. Um, they've got a lot of big plans for, like we kind of speculated, not just Death Dealer, but other Frazetta-created characters to appear. And this is kind of sparking a uh, Frazetta multiverse of stories. So, I'm, you know, Death Dealer, of course, would be a, is a great one to start with, but look out for more um, Frazetta-verse <laughs> books coming soon. So, very cool. We got a Lensner A cover on this. And then, which I love that they're doing this, they have the Frazetta B cover. So you can get the original inspiration to the character for the B cover. Yeah, I this is another one that happened in my pile and I read and I really liked it. I liked that he was this cursed anti-hero. He's not yeah. really that bad of a guy. He's just like kind of given up on life because his curse is so terrible. I, I thought that was a really good take on who the Death Dealer from those pictures <clears throat> I'd seen since I was a kid yeah. might be. He's not just a, a faceless killing machine. It's right. like, oh, this is actually a sympathetic character. It's yeah. a very smart way to handle it. And I also warn people that this is adult. It is yeah. R-rated, strong R-rated. <laughs> okay, so this is the Delato variant for Batman issue 124. So this is going to be the last issue Josh Williamson's on. This is right before Chip Zdarsky takes over. So this is going to be the aftermath issue of The Shadow War. I don't know what will be going on at this point. There's all kinds of things happening. We're kind of mid-Shadow War as it is. Um, but it does say that Batman goes back to Gotham and that Abyss might be there. Last time we saw Abyss was when Batman was dealing with them with Batman Inc. when yeah. he was international. So that's pretty interesting. I think Williamson wants to do one more thing with this cool Batman Inc. character yeah. he made. So I also like this, this cover. It's um, like the blue suit Batman. Which is one we don't see too often anymore. You're right. Yeah. So this is the Delato variant for Batman issue 124. And then here is the Amy Reader Pride variant for the same issue. And this is the Kale New cover B for Batman Killing Time number four. Fighting some tigers. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> okay, then we have this really nice cover for Batman Urban Legends number 16. This is the Edukar, Edukar uh variant with Batman and Zatanna. This I, I don't know. This just happened to be our Batman corner. We all yeah. did a Batman book in a row. Okay, so this is the Inhyuk Lee variant for Monkey Prince number five. In this, Monkey Prince and Shifsu Pigsy go to Atlantis. I mean, you can kind of see who they're going to meet there yeah. because they've heard a piece of the Monkey King staff has been lost there, and they're trying to get it back. Um, and if they do, um, Monkey Prince is supposed to be able to wield it, get, get a new weapon. So this is the Inhook Lee variant for that issue. All right, Marvel is really trying to make a big thing of Fantastic Four 44. Because um, <laughs> of all the fours? Yes. <laughs> it's an oversized issue, and um, it's the final battle of the Reckoning War, but they also say that the fate of the Marvel Universe will be decided in this issue. They follow it up by saying, we're not kidding, this is not hyperbole. The fate of the Marvel Universe will be decided. So you take that for what it's worth. Maybe more. a little hyperbole. Yeah. Like just yeah. a smidge. So this could be the last Marvel comic. They Ever. could end the universe, yep. and that's, that's it. The fate. So this is the Adams variant. <laughs> This is the Fornes Window Shades variant. It's a really cool one. He's ruining that window. <laughs> it's yep. dead. And then we have the Scroll variant. Okay, next up we have a couple of Star Wars covers. This is for Star Wars Bounty Hunters, number 24. Um, this is our Pride Month variant. Really cool. 
and this one is interesting. So they've been doing the Lucasfilm 50th anniversary. I believe this is the first one of the next series of variants. And this is called, uh, this is also by Sprouse, who is doing the Lucasfilm ones, the Choose Your Destiny variants. I don't know what that has to do with General Grievous and some lightsabers over on the side. I, is it like is it like a select a character in a video game and their weapons? Or I'm not sure uh, what they're going for with this. It's super cool. I love Grievous. Sprouse's art is incredible. But I guess we'll have to see a couple more to really get the idea of what's the uh, yeah what the what's theme the theme means. of it. So he's got two blue sabers and two green sabers. It looks like yeah. Huh. Yeah, I, I don't know either. And they but kind I'm of intrigued. spotlight the sabers over on the side. Maybe they'll do that with all of them have a character and then like a close up on their lightsaber or right. something. I'm not sure. Whatever their chosen weaponry yeah. is. Okay, so this is the land homage variant for Spider Gwen, Gwenverse issue number three. In this, uh, Gwen is going to be the cap, Captain Gwen or Gwen mm -hmm. America of 1954. So that's what's going on. A lot to keep up with when, you know, you hear she's going to be Cap, but then on the cover it's this. But that's because this is the variant cover for that issue. And this is What If Miles Morales, number four of the five-part miniseries in this What If Miles Morales was Thor. So this is the cover A, and then we have the Davila variant. He has a very Thunderstrike look with the, the jacket and everything. Yeah. Okay, then we have... Wolverine number 22, this is the Dodderman Hellfire Gala variant. So we're, we're getting our year two of Hellfire Gala and the awesome designs. These went over incredibly well last year. See all these crazy costumes that the, uh, the X-Men go to the Hellfire Gala in. So this one is starting with Wolverine. Yeah, they're bringing more people into it, too, because I saw <clears throat> one with Angela yeah. and her outfit in some news, some comic news, and it was yeah. pretty incredible. Yeah, it. Captain America, I think's there. Spider-Man's going to mm -hmm. be there, so way to branch out. It's really Moon cool. Knight. Yeah. I've seen Moon Knight. <laughs> All right, so this is the Gomez variant for X-Men Red number three. Of course, this is all about the X-Men who live on Araco up in Mars. So this is the Gomez variant, and then here is the Ruin... Heritage <laughs> Month variant. And this is Something is Killing the Children, number 24. We have a lot of very creepy covers this time around, so <laughs> we always feature Something's Killing the Children. But this one in particular, this is cover A, but then we have these Look die... That belly eyeball. I know, that's disturbing. <laughs> if that wasn't disturbing enough, we have some more die cut covers. So these are going to be interesting to see how these work out. They do look slightly different. And then we have the bloody version. He's permanently masked with, the, with that <laughs> mouth stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, next up, we have this really cool cover for Spawn 330. This is the Revolver variant. And I just love, like, it looks like if, I don't know, Spawn was done as, like, a Netflix anime style. Um, really cool cover for Spawn 330. Okay, so Sonic the Hedgehog is hitting issue number 50, and it looks like they're doing something pretty special for it. So uh, who are these characters on the cover? They kind of look like Sonic and Tails, but one is green. That's off. That's because they are two imposters. So mm -hmm. two new characters in Sonic issue number 50. They're working for Dr. Starline. One is green. The other one has, a tail, has the tails, but they're made of water. And they're going to try to impersonate... Sonic and Tails are going to be the villains of the issue. This is also going to be, um, I think, like a double size issue. It's got a bunch of covers to it. So let's show some of those. This is, of course, just a regular Sonic Team A cover. This is the Evan Stanley B cover. I love all that when characters. you just pack all the characters on there. Yep. Here is the cover C, the Thomas variant. Then we have cover E, the Nybrock variant and lastly there is the cover f the roethlisberger variant and now our last segment of the show other printings and graphic novels starting with deathstroke inc number eight the second printing i think this is going back to second print after the um homage cover for deathstroke terminator with the variant did so well. I'm assuming that's why it's going back to second print here. But regardless, here is a second printing for Deathstroke 8. 
and Robin number 13 second print, which these were the one in 25 mm. variants that were when they were in color. So now you can get them and put them next to each other and have a black and white version of that collage. Also going back to second print is Amazing Spider-Man number one. This is the new ongoing series. They gave it a, a new John Romita cover. So if you're collecting all of it, you want to get it. If you missed out on it, you might want to get it. Or if you just like this cover. And this is our first graphic novel today. The Black Hammer Omnibus. Going to be $30. This collects issues 1 through 13 and the Giant Size Annual. If you haven't read Black Hammer, we all highly recommend it here. It's one of our best sellers. Great indie superhero story with a lot of mystery to it. Hopefully this means, since they're reprinting it, that they are doing some more stuff with Black Hammer soon. Yeah, I think the first 13 issues might be like some of my favorite stuff from Black Hammer, yeah. too. Yeah. Real strong. Uh, also, wow. um, the mm -hmm. long-awaited collected edition of uh, TMNT Last Ronin. This collects all five issues um, that spanned a, three years, it feels like, mm -hmm. something around there, for twenty nine ninety nine. So uh, for all those people who got the whole thing and they're like, I need to reread this, this is a great way to read it all in one sitting. Um, great story, just, I don't know, one of the most talked out about books in the last few years, so definitely want to pick this one up. Okay, they're releasing all of Spider-Man 2099 as an omnibus. So this is going to be $125, but for that, you get 1,384 pages. Wow. Yeah, so this is a big one, and it collects uh, all of the 1992 series. That's issue 1 through 46 and the annual, and I think it collects another five appearances in other 2099 books that he did. So, uh, you know, Spider-Man 2099, of course, is Miguel O'Hara. I actually have the full run. It took me a little while as they came through. Uh, they never came through all together. It was always yeah. like a few issues here, a few issues there. But um, anyhow, if you want to get them all in this hardcover edition, you have, um, this is the Fern cover for this. And then here is the Leonardi cover, which is that original yep. number one cover. All right, and then we have What If Into the Multiverse. A lot of multiverse stuff going on with Marvel right now. This collects the 1989 What If series, 1 through 39. Uh, also, a few other, a couple of things. That's the main gist of it. 40 issues from 1989 What If. Um, just the alternate possibilities and unexpected ways that you see all your characters, all your favorite characters. So, 125 bucks, and we got a couple covers. This is the direct market cover. And in the Milgram cover, which these look quite similar. Like how everyone's just pointing at Iron Man. <laughs> you! <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I've ever seen this cover before. It doesn't ring a bell. Mm. It's, it's good, though. Yeah. I like it. And that's it. That is our show for today. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. And if you found any of this info useful, please subscribe to our channel and leave a comment below with what you're excited about. Uh, once again, we will not be having normal shows next week, at least with all three of us. Andy May, if you summon the energy in the comments, uh, Andy May make some things for you. Special, special shows just featuring him. But we will be back to normal the following week. All right. Well, we will see you guys next time. Hope you have an awesome Friday the 13th weekend, and we'll see you again soon.